going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Take Tonic Takes 2021. I'm going to change it up a little bit because it's not foggy today, but, you know, you got Will and Ivan here. What's going on, Ivan? How are you doing this Friday night? I'm doing great. Uh, not only did the Quakes win, which is, of course, the main story being a Quakes podcast, but the Warriors won yesterday. The A's won in walk-off fashion today. You don't have to talk about the Sharks right now or the Raiders' bad draft choices. So th- things are go- looking up right now. And I think with the Quakes, like with the first two wins of the season against SC Dallas and uh, DC United, there was a sentiment of, okay, well, Quakes didn't look all that great defensively. They got away with a few instances where they should have been scored on. Uh, they haven't kept a clean sheet yet. But this time, this was a really – gutsy win i think and it was looking like it was going to be a defeat until the 83rd minute when chris wondolowski flipped the script entirely but all that matters is that you get those goals whether they're in the first minute 90th minute or whenever they happen yeah definitely i mean um this was an exciting game for the last like you know like the last 10 minutes of the game right i mean uh um, <laughs> yeah it was a little worrisome you know uh you know that crazy bicycle uh goal we'll get into it a little bit later but yeah the right to right then the half you know lopez a little rusty uh pass you know to get a turnover and the next thing you know uh one of the best you know, goals of the year everyone's talking about that is might be the goal of the year candidate right there, right off the bat against the earthquakes, but like earthquake fashion, Wando comes in and he does Wando things, but we'll just get right into it on um, the, you know, the match day. You want to break it down, Ivan? Yeah. Before we get into that, uh, this is our first podcast we have done together in this regular season. Uh, have you been lately, Will? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we've been running around. <laughs> it's the first time that me and Ivan are uh, doing this together. So, you know, hopefully it goes well, but I'm doing well. I mean, yeah, I was trying to catch the game and I'm sorry to all the fans that are hoping for the, the interview. You know, we had some difficulties with that uh, today, but you know, don't worry. Most of the time we'll be, we'll be getting those interview questions and all that for you guys, but sorry about that today, but instead we could just cheer about Wando, but I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. That's probably the one good thing about the next game being a midweek game against Seattle Sounders is that we have an opportunity to fix that void of uh, press conference content for the next few days very soon. (laughs) Exactly. So, and for me, it's been an interesting transition period. Uh, Things are going well with the job and stuff, but we're approaching the end of the semester here in my teaching internship program. And I'm looking at my options for the next school year and after this program, what kind of work I'm going to try to be into as the pandemic is starting to ease a bit, more opportunities are springing up, but it's still a really difficult job market. So right now, I'm just happy to be back with this podcast because it was definitely one of the most regular parts of the pandemic for me. Once we were able to get things going, we had MLS matches coming thick and fast. It was something to look forward to. And here we are again. Dude, definitely. Yeah, I know. Um, but best of luck, man. Best of luck to all the job searches, man. I know it's tough. I mean, I'm searching for jobs right now, too. And, you know, my wife is as well. So everyone's kind of on the hunt. So but best of luck. But uh, I mean, we got a wonderful game to recap, you know, another victory three and one. How about that? Yeah, three wins out of four games to start the season. Definitely unexpected when we lost our opening match to Houston Dynamo, which on paper, it looked like potentially the weakest of the first four teams that we were going to face this season. But I guess this is MLS. Like, we shouldn't, you know, rely too much on how things look on paper to determine how things are going to go. Things are going to be twisting and turning all throughout the 34 match season and beyond. Yeah, I mean, and it's, I think it's been a while since the Quakes have gotten a victory in Real Salt Lake, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Right. Yeah, this game was in Rio Tinto Stadium in Sandy, Utah. I have uh, my cousin and her fiance. They live within 40 minutes of the stadium. They recently moved to, I believe, uh, somewhere in the Salt Lake City, great area, but a greater area. But it's a really nice location a really nice stadium and it's one where i'm glad quakes were able to get some success in and chris wanolowski especially has been very successful in that 
against Real Salt Lake in particular, both, you know, playing at home and away. He's now at 12 goals against Real Salt Lake in his career. Just think of that number, 12 goals. If you got that in a single MLS season against all the opponents you faced throughout that season, that's considered a decent season. But Chris Wolowski has that much against a single team. And I don't even think that's the most against a single opponent he's had. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, just Wando, you know, it's, it's going to be hard once we're going to get to a time when we're not talking about Wondolowski because he's not in the Quakes anymore. So, you know, that's like that time is eventually coming, but now we're still getting Wando in this like super sub fashion <laughs> yeah. and just scoring these goals and to have 12 against Real Salt Lake. I mean, I mean, we could start looking at each team we face. We need to kind of just look every time and just see, oh, how many has Wando scored against, you know, X, X team? And we'll just have that stat every time we go and do a podcast now because, I mean, why not? <laughs> superist. I'm not sure if superist is the word, but the most super of super subs. That's how I would describe Chris Wondolowski. It's what an amazing uh, record he's carved out for him. He's up to 168 goals in Major League Soccer, uh, MLS uh, regular season. But um, as the Real Salt Lake commentators unfortunately had to keep reminding us because I was watching on ESPN Plus and they always default to the uh, local commentary. It doesn't count the two goals, uh, Chris Wondolowski, or the goal, because Real, the two goals they, he scored against Real Salt Lake last year was in the regular season matchup, but it doesn't count MLS's back. So 168 is, that's all right. That's still an incredible amount. Of course, it's still the record in MLS, and it's a record that unless – Kai Kamara really turns on the afterburners in the last stage of his career. That record seems pretty safe at the moment. Yeah, so as we keep talking about Chris Wanda asking his goals, but let's, you know, give a little love to Real Salt Lake. Let's we break down the goals. So what happened uh, during that 45th minute or 43rd minute? I should 43rd say. minute, yeah. So what did you think about the bicycle? Tell me about it. How did you feel? So me being the pessimistic San Jose Earthquakes fan, the first thing I fixated on at first was like, really – we scored against, we got scored on from a throw-in. We're not playing Iceland at the Euros. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> but uh, the end result was a very beautiful goal. And it's yet another, it's something I've said at le- for at least one goal every week so far this Major League Soccer season. Uh, goal of the year contender. Possibly goal of the week already in the first game of this match, week four. But... You know, it's a bicycle kick goal. You don't see those every day uh, unless you play FIFA a lot. So (laughs) it's something you have to appreciate. It sucks that it was scored against us. I mean, we can appreciate it a little bit more now that we still won anyway. But in the moment, it's one of those things like you just have to applaud Rubio Rubin. He's a player that at one point he looked to be someone thought of as the answer for that uh, U.S. men's national team striker role. Spoiler alert, he was not. Uh, but mm-hmm. he's finding his way back in this career. Um, we've seen a lot of players, American players succeed in Europe, but there's still a lot that they haven't had the opportunity to break in. They're going back to MLS for a bit of a reprieve and maybe just maybe uh, play well enough to earn consideration for future call-ups. And Rubio Rubin, he reminded us in that moment that he's a decent player, at least for MLS level. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you got to tip your hat where it's due. You know, he had a great goal. Um, and, you know, that he is bouncing back. I, I mean, I was reading a lot of the tweets. A lot of people were commenting that, you know, he's, you know, bouncing back. And that's, that's good. You know, it's good for him. It's good for Real Salt Lake. Um, but we'll also, you know, get into the – the wonderful Chris Wanda Lowski goals. I mean, first, did you, you know, you see Wando getting subbed in, I think, around the 75th minute, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It was about 15 minutes left in the game. Did you expect, okay, here we, here's Wando, like, let's expect a goal. Like, were you, were you more, like you said, you're more on the pessimistic side, but how were you feeling once you saw Wando come in? My pessimistic side comes more when we're defending rather than when we're attacking. When it comes to us attacking, Chris Wondolowski, he is a goal threat the minute he steps onto the field uh, in a game setting. Just like Stephen Curry crossing halfway court in basketball, you expect something magical to happen. And whether it's a goal or not, sometimes Chris Wondolowski, just the threat of him darting into the six-yard box in a a, uh, 
set piece situation can cause chaos for someone else to break free and get a goal there. So whatever the case may be, I'm always happy to see Chris Wondolowski come out. It's never just waving the white flag. It's never your obligatory, oh, Chris Wondolowski is a San Jose Earthquakes player who is not injured. So it would be sacrilegious not to play him and give an opportunity. Chris Wondolowski has earned his minutes even at this latter stage of his career. And he definitely earned them here. And we're going to talk about whether this will lead to a start in the next game or if he's going to continue to thrive in that super sub role. But where the case may be, this is the Wondolowski that has become an immortalized legend for San Jose Earthquakes fans. Yeah, I mean, and the, the first goal, you know, it wasn't the super sexiest goal, like a bicycle kick. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but guess what? He got, you know, he got a rebound and put it in the back of the net. And that's, you know, that's what all it takes. You know, as long as you can get a goal, he's always in that right area. Every time well, someone's cleaning up a goal, it's Wondolowski. And he's just in the right spot <laughs> at the right time. But yeah. let's talk about the second one because that was much, much, much sexier. A nice header, but a great ball by Carlos Fierro. Oh, so wow. Please to break down for me what you think about uh, Carlos Vero's ball to wonderful Wondolowski's head. I think some of the assists in this early season for the San Jose Earthquakes have been even prettier than the goals themselves. Like the end result is what matters in soccer, but you have to make great assists and, and sometimes to make goals happen. And that's what happened here with Carlos Fierro. I think Carlos Fierro is another player that's answered the bell as of late. It took him a while to get going, and Quakes fans were getting impatient. I was getting impatient, especially also as a Chivas fan, because I know what this guy is capable of. He's won a Liga Mekis title with Chivas, so it would be nice if he can maybe lead to some success for San Jose Earthquakes as well. We're thinking of a little bit ahead of ourselves at that point, or maybe I am. I'll speak for myself. But right now, Carlos Fierro, he's cashing in. He's doing the best, and this is the kind of – moments where it justifies the decision okay thank you for your service vaco kavashili but it, you know we're sticking with fiero and you're off to pastures new off to south korea where he's banging in goals too but it, it worked out here like carlos fiero is playing like he deserves to be a starter yeah no he definitely is i think this is the second assist of the season if i'm not mistaken um, and I believe when, you know, I was watching him last game, I felt like he was kind of absent during the game. Um, but the game before against FC, FC Dallas, he was definitely present because he had the, obviously that goal line save. And I believe he had assist that game, but I could be wrong. Uh, don't quote me on that, but at least we know for sure he had that goal line save. So he, you're definitely seeing a lot more Carlos Giro. Um, you're definitely seeing him out there. And this is another reason, like you said, why he's out there. He had a, an amazing assist. And yeah, I mean, Vaco, you know, wasn't this kind of type of player. And that's why we kept, you know, Carlos Fierro out there. So, I mean, it was a beautiful ball. And of course, Wando finishes it. Who else? Like, well, I mean, who else would it be? But there was a lot of yellow cards uh, during this game. I mean, let's, let's, uh, very interesting. Right in the first minute. Four of them were for uh, Real Salt Lake. Yeah, first minute we got Demir Kralak. And again, the commentators were like, well, that you can uh, rule out, don't g give up an easy foul early on in the game. Literally a first minute yellow. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, fortunately, I missed the, that yellow because I was trying to fight with the NBC Plus <laughs> app. I, well, I mean, don't get me started. We're not going to try to. We can do a whole that. other podcast about <laughs> the <laughs> unnecessary difficulties about watching soccer. Which is watching know? the earthquakes. I mean, soccer in general, yeah. right? Like, just, oh, man. Oh, okay. But yeah, we're just going to let that out real quick. It was frustrating. <laughs> it took me like about 30 minutes of the match to get it at, I mean, 30 plus, because obviously I tried to get on before. But anyway, yes, I saw it on Twitter right away. They're like, oh, my God, a yellow already. I was like, what? What's going on? <laughs> um, but another, a little concern, obviously, for the only quake that got a yellow because we're you know we're talking about the quakes here remedy um uh, i mean don't get me wrong i'm not saying he's that was bad on him or whatever but this is his third yellow so oh. he's, he's picking he's picking up yellows that's my my point i was trying to make is that he's picked up his third yellow and i'm it's totally like not like normal soccer when you get two yellows in mls you know you usually have to sit a game for i thought that's how it was but it's five the rule yeah, is five, right? I think it's five for most domestic leagues, too. Oh, really? Is it five? Well, I, I guess it's I play too much two, FIFA. Uh, it's two for, like, the Champions League and, like, World Cup. Those are fewer games. 
Right. So I guess I'm, I've been focusing too much on the, the bigger echelons. Leagues. Yeah. Exactly. So well, still, regardless, he's three out of five. So he's closer now. So my point right. is that he has to worry, you know, watch out on these yellow cards. So I feel like, you know, for many, he needs to, you know, relax a little bit. And we don't, we need him out there because he's playing well. I mean, what do you think? I think we has been playing really well. And I think he, he did another solid game other than, the, you know, getting more yellows. What do you think about Remedy's game? Yeah, I think uh, Arturo Vidal, I mean, Remedi, uh, he's prone to making some fouls more often than he should, but he's a midfield destroyer. Like, he's going to disrupt things for the attacker, and naturally disrupting things means getting involved, and you're going to, you know, draw some attention from the referee. And the good news is, you know, if Remedi gets suspended, we have Jutsen. If Jutsen gets suspended, we have Remedi. It's nice to have these op- options that we didn't really have last season. Uh for Judson, like the next like pure center defensive midfielder we had, unless you were going to move up Florian Youngworth, was Luis Felipe. And with all due respect to Luis Felipe, he's no remedy or Judson, uh, at least at this present moment. So I think this is what we expected him to do. I think get, the law of averages suggests that he's not going to get three yellows every four games for the whole season. So I think hopefully things cool off and I think he's adjusting to this system as well. He's one of the new transfers. So that'll hopefully help him out. Yeah. I mean, just the last thing about the yellows, because like, I mean, who wants to like talk yeah. about yellow cards the whole time? But I think it was just really funny that like Matt Beasler's yellow took so long to get called. Nick even, Beasler. Uh, Nick, Nick Beasler. Oh, sorry. I'm so used to the Matt, Matt, Matt Beasler. Beasler yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> sorry. That was that was a good slip up though. You know, that's a, that's a common one. But yes, excuse me, Nick. Thank you so much for fixing that. Yes, Nick Beasler. That foul took a really long time to get called. I thought it was pretty funny because he was like holding on for days, and the ref was just kind of just chilling, holding his whistle in the pocket. And I was like, uh, what's going on here? But you know, whatever. It was a good foul by him, but it didn't really matter. It didn't hold. Up. I will say, like, to give uh, credit to the commentators uh, on ESPN Plus. Uh, my favorite part was when there was a bit of a scuffle and they're like, why did Flo Youngworth have to sprint 30 yards to get involved? Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> yeah, it's a phrase I toss with my it's, – it's a phrase I toss around with my coworkers at work all the time. And like this co- one coworker in particular we do this the most with, she knows very little about sports, so she's going to be tickled that like – this came up in soccer and you know it's just gonna be funny to tell her next time i see her at work but um i'll go briefly over the lineup so for real salt lake they had david ochoa in goal andrew brody justin glad eric holt and donny toya as their back four uh some key injuries there uh nick beasler and pablo ruiz uh, as their holding midfielders and then their front four of albert rusnak damir kralak Justin Merrim and Rubio Rubin, as far as MLS uh, attack forces go, it's not the most threatening, but it's definitely serviceable, and they have some quality players there. There was three changes from this lineup from their previous game. Uh, Andrew Brody for Aaron Herrera, Eric Holt for Marcel Silva, and Justin Merrim for Anderson Julio. Silva and Herrera in particular, these are usually nailed on starters for Real Salt Lake uh, when they're available. I believe they were hurt. Uh, use subs for them. They only use two subs, which goes back to how they um, they were leading until the 83rd minute. So clearly, uh, Freddy Juarez didn't feel the need to change too much. Um, he brought on Michael Chang and Douglas Martinez, and he was also a bit short on options too because of the aforementioned injuries, uh, not just for defenders. For the San Jose Earthquakes, you know these guys well. JT in goal, Tommy Thompson, Flo Youngworth, Tanner Beeson, and Marcos Lopez back for uh, Paul Marie, uh, Eric Rometty, Jackson Ewell holding midfielders. Then you got Espinosa, Chofis, Fierro, and Kate Cowell up top. And then we saw some sub appearances from a lot of veteran presences. Chris Wondolowski, of course, he made a dramatic appearance and a game changing appearance. Chase Salinas, Indy Rios. Luciano Abacasis and Judson. So it looks like San Jose Earthquakes 
granted, they haven't had the injury problems that Real Salt Lake have had. And it's kind of interesting that they've had to make so many uh, changes this early in the season because they've also played a game less. This is their third game of the season. San Jose Earthquakes and the vast majority of MLS will play their fourth game this weekend. But I think as much as there's a lot of options and maybe there's always some players that you think that maybe should be starting playing a little bit more, the way this is going right now, it's starting to feel like Alanis is having his uh, 11 figured out right now. Uh, Almeida? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Almeida. So Alanis so might not <laughs> – Alanis might not be in that 11, which is interesting. Uh, he's the most interesting decision, I think, has been Tanner Beeson getting some game time more than I expected him to over Alanis. Yeah, I mean, I, as far as my understanding was about the last game, it was something that was, again, acting up with his knee. And I think mm-hmm. it, was, it was one that he's injured from last season, but I could be wrong about that. It's not right. I'm not. Uh, so, you know, it's really hard to hear about injury news. Like from my understanding, I thought Marcos Lopez was going to be out much longer for his injury, yeah. but, but guess what? He's back. That was the only change in the lineup that we saw was Paul Marie out and uh, Lopez in, which is what we should be expecting on the regular basis. But yeah, Abison, um, he had, a, I really thought he had a really good game last game. Uh, today I, I saw him struggle a little bit more. Um, but still, you know, overall played a, played a well game, for, subbing in for, you know, a, a starter essentially in Alanis. So, yeah, I think Beeson is getting his reps in and he needs to make the best out of his opportunity. Um, so, yeah, definitely last game, though, against uh, um, uh, I'm spacing out who we played last game. Uh, but <laughs> the last game, Tanner Beeson played much better and obviously he got an assist as well. Last game was against DC United. That's United. Were looking for. Yes, I was about to some reason I wanted to say FC Dallas, but no. That will um, help me uh, remember because that is going to be our only Eastern Conference opponent for this early part of the season, it looks like. Because I'm looking ahead, the next four games are against Western Conference opponents. Which is big, and yeah, but well, but again, back to, <laughs> real quick, to back to Tanner. Uh, yeah, I think he's you know stepping up, and we'll see. Hopefully, all the needs gets back out there because I mean, it looks like he might be our guy that's shooting penalty kicks. So I'm curious what uh, if he's going to be back out there for that. Right, there's going to be a lot of players where if they're on the field, like we could have three or four no notable options for a penalty or set piece situation. So that's something to monitor. So a few other notes from this game. So Real Salt Lake entered this game a perfect two for two. They're not perfect anymore, but, you know, given they were one of the teams that missed out on the playoffs last season, uh, they can still hold their heads up. Uh, they, they got plenty of time and they're in the mix to change that fate this time around. Uh, like I mentioned, 12 goals all time for Chris Wanolaski against Real Salt Lake. And let's, celebrate will because for this <laughs> night and probably this night only uh we're top of the western conference yeah we, let's go we did it, <laughs> we did stop, it. The stop the count stop the count <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect that was perfect we only need four games of the season like we're done garber yep. yeah we're done <laughs> lock us in put an x to buy our name we're in the playoffs now yes. uh but now that we got that error system, let's enjoy it. <laughs> but there are a couple teams that can still pass us up this week. Um, Seattle Sounders are on seven points. So th- with a win in their next game, they'll obviously be ahead of San Jose Earthquakes by one point. Austin and LA Galaxy are the other teams on six points, uh, other than Real Salt Lake, who can't gain on us this week, of course. But both of them have worse goal difference than us. So it would take like a big win for them to be above us. But of course, right now, like, as you can see by the end of this podcast, I'm not going to do a full on like table uh, review because we're going to wait for the table to develop a little bit more into the season before we do that. Um, but, but it's exciting. Like you doesn't matter if it's week one or week 34, you want to be as high in that table as possible. And San Jose Earthquakes, they're getting the job done. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And they are definitely getting the job done. And it's exciting that, you know, they're winning games. They're not tying games, you know, tying ties or whatever. You get a point. Yeah, yeah. But you're getting wins. And, you know, this game, I thought, oh, are they going to just – I see, I don't feel like with this Earthquakes team in general, we're not going to be a team that's going to play for ties. You know, no matter what, we're always going to go. Once we get that tying goal, we're like, we got that momentum going and we want the other one. And that's what happened when we saw today. We stole three points away from Real Salt Lake. 
If you find me a press conference where Matias Almeida is celebrating a tie, uh, I also have a bridge I can sell you in like Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that's going to be like, you know, a sign that the end is near. Like Matias Almeida is so passionate, so competitive. Like, I think maybe deep down inside, like if he nicks a late equalizer, like it's like the 90th plus six minute, like part of him will feel joy in that, but he's going to also look at what they could do differently to win. And I think that's what you want in a manager. And I'm not saying celebrating a tie is uh, bad. Like I, people uh, were a little too overly critical on um, one of the Arsenal young players. He had a uh, equalizer to tie against Fulham. And it's like, oh no, it's Fulham. Like, you know, they're relegation fodder. But like, hey, come on, it's still a goal. Like, let the player celebrate a goal. So, but you know what I mean? Like, Matias Almeida, you won't catch him going for anything other than victory each time out. Yeah, and it shows in his substitutions when he, what he's really trying to do. And especially again, like, you know, like we saw Wondolowski come in for Tanner Beeson. Like, I mean, that's, it was showing pure that, hey, he wants goals and he wants to win. So he's willing to sacrifice a, a center back to get that job done. So, I mean, LTS, you know, trying to get wins and just working away, knowing that, hey, I can take out a center back to try to get a win, and it worked. All right, Will, I got a couple options for you for the man of the match. Oh, okay. We got Chris, we got Wando, we got Wondolowski, and we got all of the above. I'm going with all of the above, I think. Clear winner here, right? <laughs> Man, I don't know. After the thing, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> like, like, what are we doing? Like, fortunately, like, uh, there's nobody else, so we can really. I mean, I mean, yeah, we. JT Marston Kasky, he other than the oh, goal he let in, like yeah. you can't really blame him for that. Yeah, he kept us in it a couple times, uh, but you know, Chris Wondolowski, yeah. he deservedly gets the headlines. Uh, the goats. There, there was one fan question. Uh, where uh, or a listener question where uh, Roberto at Epicenter asked if does Carlos Fierro have a claim for player of the game? He shot and his assist allowed Juan Olaski to score those two two crucial goals. If anyone has an argument, it is him, and Fierro will get his time. But tonight we're going to go with Juan Olaski. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really hard. I mean, yes, yes. If we wanted to say, hey, uh, Ivan, you want to take Wando, and if I was going to take somebody else, other than right. Wando, I would take Carlos Fierro. Carlos Fierro, hundred percent, right. earns it. That uh, assist was beautiful. I mean, he was, you know, he just played a great game. And obviously, that, you know, that ball in gives him the next top spot to being who gets the next man in the match for the earthquakes. But I mean, do you want to start? Um, we kind of got into the fan questions a little bit. Do you want to keep going with those? Yeah, uh, with the Fantasy League update as well, keep an eye out on Twitter for a Fantasy League update at the end of each match week. We're gonna start uh, doing a little bit of an update. Uh, once uh, all the matches have gone through, and that way we'll have a clear picture of where people stand. Maybe not every week, maybe every couple weeks, but we'll definitely keep you guys involved because this is our first time doing a fantasy league with Tectonic Takes. Uh, we're excited to be involved in that, and it's a great way for us to interact with each other too, along with you know our various social media presences. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I'll, um, I'll ask you the one of the first questions, even though we kind of yeah. answered one of them, but, you know, we'll try to go back and forth here. So we'll start off with good old Jason at first. Jason MS asks, What's can, what can be done about Tommy Thompson? He hasn't been too good this season. Right. All right, Ivan, how do you feel about that? I, I feel like this already. is deja vu. I feel like we've had this <laughs> conversation about Tommy Thompson ever since he's come back from Sacramento Republic, to be honest. Um He's had his spells where, like, he's looked like a locked-on starter, and other times he's been the scapegoat or, like, the point of emphasis of attack for other teams because he isn't a pure fullback. He converted there from being a midfielder, and he still often plays midfielder, too. He's a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, if we're being honest, even though I love Tommy Thompson. But And that's okay. You know, versatile players are versatile for a reason. They can't really excel in one position unless you're Philip Lahm. Like, he does both very – he did both very well for Germany and Bayern Munich. But, you know, this is Tommy Thompson we're talking about. I think – if you're looking at anyone in the uh, starting 11 that could potentially be moved at some point, 
you could potentially, you know, split time at right back with the variety of options we have right now. You have Abacastis, you have Paul Marie, you have Tommy Thompson. That's definitely something that can be fluid. Um, but yeah, I think Tommy Thompson is not playing at a level where like, I'm going to be worried every time a winger is bombing forward on his direction yet, but I think it's something to keep an eye on. Yeah. And I, um, I guess I can't really fully judge all his games, obviously because you know, that the, the dynamo game, he was out in the first four minutes with that shoulder injury. Um, but you know, he is supposed to be the Swiss army knife type of player playing multiple hats. Um, and yeah, you know, Tommy hasn't been playing great. Uh, and today wasn't one of his be- better games. And we see that's, you know, I think Salinas came in for him, if I were not mistaken, right? Did Salinas come in for him? For yeah, I believe that was the sub. Yeah, he was one of the first players subbed in that triple right. substitution. I'll get knock out some of these comments real quick. We got a couple from Facebook. Jorge Martinez noted that Ted Ramey said, don't sleep on Wando in the soccer hour. Shout out to Ted Ramey. Thanks for uh, appearing on our podcast. He, he, he's awesome. And then... RSL went to bed and Wando scored two. I thought that was hilarious and that was very true. Uh, Yolanda Perez on Facebook um, asked uh, on the uh, Quakes uh, live thread, uh, why can't all players be like Wando? And it's a very simple yet uh, earnest question, Yolanda. Thank you. And I'm going to say what fans said when Lynn and Donovan didn't make the World Cup roster in 2014. If the U.S. men's national team had... 23 players better than Landon, they'd be winning the World Cup. And if San Jose Earthquakes had a squad full of Wando level players, we'd be winning the MLS Cup. But, you know, we get the one Wando and we're happy enough with that. <laughs> of course. I mean, if, I mean, <laughs> wow, we, we love that we have Wando. And yeah, I mean, of course, why wouldn't we all want players like Wando all around? You know, he brings that fire intensity every time. And yeah, I wish all our guys could score 168 goals. That would be amazing. <laughs> I think, you know, it's still early days in Kate Kell's career, but he's definitely got Wando DNA, I feel like. Not that he's related to Wando Lassie, but like he reminds me of a young Wando. Like he, he can be that next player. Like we were thinking and agonizing for the last few seasons, who's going to be our long-term solution at striker? And maybe Kate Cal will play so well that he can't be our long-term solution because he goes to Europe. But for the time that he's with the Earthquakes, I think he's becoming as useful and as clutch of a player as him. Yeah, I mean, definitely he had some chances today. And like I said on some of my Twitter comments, if he scored the, one of those late-minute uh, goals, like uh, towards the end, they had a, like a three to a three to one break, and he took a shot. And I was going to say I was going to break my dad's computer. So that, <laughs> that would have been awesome if he put that in because he had a nice – Nice angle, nice shot, but yeah, he definitely had his chances again today. He, I think he had at least maybe three solid chances to score a goal, and he couldn't come up uh, this time. But, I mean, like I said, every time Kate touches the ball, it's exciting. All right, I'll ask the next question now. Andy at real underscore Andy Thomas asks, Fierce seems to disappear in matches and then comes out of nowhere to make amazing plays. Is that good enough for him to keep his starting role? I think we covered that. I think for now he's definitely a starter. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. And like I did, I did say that. Yeah, something last game he, I felt like he did disappear, and he does sometimes. I feel like you, you know, he's not touching the ball as much, and he just kind of disappears from games. But there, there's, we're at a point where like, well, who else would really step in for? I think right, right now, I, I think he's just a solid starter, and there's no question at this moment that anyone else could replace him that's better. Right, and I think. It's one of those things as well where he, when he's disappearing in games, he's not actively being a liability. He's not a liability defensively. Obviously, he had that amazing clearance uh, that one game. And offensively, he's not sh- wasting chances, shooting like a stormtrooper on acid. Like, he's doing fine. <laughs> like, so I think we're going to be okay uh, with Carlos Fierro starting for the foreseeable future. Uh, the next question we have... Uh, from JPM at Yamaning asks, what are your thoughts on Judson not starting yet? He was one of our top players last year and is far more mobile than Remedy. I think what's going to happen with a couple of these players, I think, is during this hot run of form, the players that ended up in the starting lineup at the beginning of that form, they're going to ride that wave until they need think changes are necessary. 
Well, right, but I also remember that Jutsun's not starting because he's cut, he come back. He's not phys- uh, physically fit yet, technically, through Almeida's eyes right. because he did take that long time against Visa, and he was you know, away from everyone for a while. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what we're waiting to get um, uh, Jutsun in and uh, to be fit, and that's why we see him subbed in every single game that he's been back. Um, he's getting subbed in because you're trying to get him more reps, more time. Um, I think once Almeida feels like he's physically fit and, you know, I, I don't think why he wouldn't put him in the starting lineup. But like you did say, I mean, if we're riding with a hot hand and romeni has been playing solid, I mean, I, why would we take him out, though? But, I mean, at the same time, it, I mean, we, we, it could go. I feel like it can go either way that we can, you know, have Jitsen in and then Remedi would come in as a sub for somebody else regardless, you know, whoever. It's going to be kind of – those guys are going to be kind of interchangeable that they, we will see them every game basically as a sub. Um, so, yeah, I definitely – that's why Jitsen hasn't been starting yet. Right. I think it will be interesting if we see a game where we have both Jitsen and Remedi starting if – the Quakes style of play offensively is still sustainable or if having both of them kind of uh, nerfs the attack a significant amount. Uh, I follow Manchester United in Premier League. They're my uh, PL team. Uh, and they often start both Fred and Scott McTominay who are considered more defensive midfielders, although both have abilities going forward as well. And when you have a player like Donny van de Beek, an exciting Dutch attacking midfielder who constantly is left on the bench, you kind of wonder, like, why? But then, like, you do get a sense of balance and stability with that. So I think it would be an interesting experiment, one of these games. But for now, I think it, it would only happen if uh, Yule was called up on international duty because if Yule's available for San Jose Earthquakes, you got to play him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well, getting closer on time here, but let's try to get most of these questions because right. we do appreciate all of these questions that we're getting. So I'll ask you the next one because why not? This is a yeah. pretty fun question, but this is from Quakes Woj. Woj pre- bomb. <laughs> yes, I really appreciate you liking all, all my tweets, and it's at Trevor Wojcik. Uh, is Wando immortal? He will be immortal in our hearts and in San Jose Quakes history, but as we have all been treading and we're coming to grips with, Father Time is undefeated. <laughs> That's true. So we hopefully his mortality lasts as long as he possibly can make it. So for sure this season, yes, he is immortal, immortal, immortal. Yes. Yeah, and um, we're gonna briefly thank uh, Sterling and uh, Johnny for their questions as well. Unfortunately, we're short on time. We're gonna end with the fan questions with Parker at D Parks ninety seven. He asked, with nine points of a possible 12, as Quakes fans, what do we think the bars should be to define a successful season this year? Personally, for me, Will, that hasn't changed yet. Like, this is a great start to the season, and this is kind of what I was expecting because, with all due respect, these are all the teams that, like, if we get caught sleeping, we can lose to them. But at the same time, if Quakes play at their best, they're beatable opponents too. So we're beating teams that we're, su- we're supposed to beat if we want to be ambitious and we want to – ensure a spot in the playoffs and do some damage there. I think that's still the goal. I think we need to advance one stage in the playoffs minimum. That would be a success for me. Yes. I mean, of course the bar is make playoffs. And then the right after is, yeah, we need to, we need to go past the next round. I mean, it's been, I don't know. It's been a long time since that's happened. Since 2010, since we beat the New York Red Bulls in the 2010 MLS playoffs, in between then, the only other knockout stage MLS competition success we had was coincidentally against Real Salt Lake and MLS is back, but that's not the MLS playoffs. MLS playoffs, we knocked down, we were knocked down the first round against LA Galaxy in the year we won the sh- Supporter Shield. And then the only other time we made the playoffs uh, before last year when we lost on penalties to Portland, Kansas City, we lost by 5 0 to Vancouver Whitecaps of all teams. So. It's been yeah, a while. 20, it's been a hot minute, uh, not so hot minute. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like I said, everyone where the bar should be is make playoffs and then proceed after the next round. And then after we get past the next round, anything's possible. You know, kind of get that monkey off your back kind of feeling. You know, we'll move on to the second round and hopefully the Quakes can create magic. I'm sad about uh, there not being any U.S. Open Cup, but now it's just focusing on MLS from now until the playoffs, uh, MLS regular season. So there's no excuses. Like you have to keep your head in the game throughout the season. 
Um, there's no CONCACAF Champions League for Quakes or any MLS team not named Philadelphia Union now to worry about. And even then, that won't be until August anyway. <laughs> Right, so we won't go too in depth in the next or uh, in the what's to come for the rest of the MLS as far as games, but there's yeah. a bunch of games coming. So of course, if you're a fan of not just the earthquakes but watching soccer in itself, there's going to be plenty of games going what's on. What's a game you're looking forward to? Well, like you have the list in front of you. We're short on time, so we won't list them all. But uh... um, honestly, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, I only want to watch it to be more of a scout kind of thing, but El Trafico. Yep, El uh, Trafico. I, I think every Quakes fan should just watch it just because get, we're two, these are two teams that we have to face all the time. And I'm a low-key of the Chicharito fan before when he was a West Ham <laughs> player because I'm a West Ham yeah. guy. So when he played for West Ham, but yes, I mean, he's had a good start of the season. I want to see if he can keep playing at, uh, playing well. But yes, unfortunately, I want to watch El Trafico. Yeah, How about El Trafico is definitely one half circled, um, especially now that we've played both Dallas and Dynamo. Uh, the Texas Cup or Texas Derby, whatever they call it, is going to be interesting as well tomorrow. And then uh, on S Sunday, May 9th, uh, the main draw, of course, will be the Cascadia Cup clash between Portland Timbers versus the Seattle Sounders. And also keeping an eye on whenever Austin FC plays because they're playing on the road until their home opener next month in June. And yet they've been doing very well for themselves. So credit to Austin. Good job so far. Yeah. And then, of course, we got to thank our wonderful sponsors, Ruckman Scarves, you know, the official scarf supplier of the MLS USL US Soccer. Get your custom scarves. We need to start getting our own custom scarves on. It's been oh, we need yeah. to start doing that. But, of course, you know, uh, we got to thank all the Patreon members, all the people that have been helping us support us. Please, you know, shoot us a follow. Um and yeah, I mean, uh, Ivan, I know you were uh, had some one uh, check out Ivan's articles. Ivan, you want to give a quick little thing about your articles that you want to give the people to shout out for? Yeah, so just uh, yesterday I published an article talking about six uh, MLS clubs that have defied expectations so far this season. I talked about San Jose Earthquakes uh, pr performing above their expectations, mm -hmm. and also I talked about Austin FC and CF Montreal, no longer Montreal Impacts, uh, good start to the season. And also talking a little bit about slumps such as uh, Portland Timbers, for example, and Minnesota United, who are still looking for their first points of the season. So if you're interested in some of analysis from an MLS perspective, not just San Jose Earthquakes, but throughout the league, uh, my link to uh, my MLS Multiplex articles will be in the podcast description as well. Awesome. Perfect. Um, yes, Ivan's been writing great articles, you know, for the MLS Multiplex. So please give him a look uh, and, you know, it will be greatly appreciated. And lastly, I just let you guys know that uh, we're going to be having something big for our Patreon members or not just for everyone in general. Um, so big hint, hint, look out for that. Um, of course, follow us on Twitter at Tectonics Takes. Um, I think most of our, all our handles are attached to that. So I won't go give us every single handle. But yes, please, you know, follow us on Twitter. Um, I'm going to try to be at mostly all the home games mm -hmm. and then eventually yep. everyone else can be there. Um, but the last but not least, yep, I almost forgot the, our last sponsor, the Beautiful Game Network, of course. But sign off here on a wonderful Friday night to beat Real Salt Lake 2-1 to one because of the wonderful Wanda Lowski. Go Quakes. Go Quakes. Until next time when we play Seattle Sounders. Yep, Seattle Sounders Wednesday. We're going to beat the Sounders. That's what we want to do. Yep, right. that's what we're going to do. Go Quakes. <laughs> Go Quakes.